A finite printer costs a lot of money, ink and paper even more. Finite printers consume tons of ink. It will not be economic before you sell 5 prints a month or more. It is much cheaper and it is even much easier to print over a lab. You must be crazy to buy an own printer. And these were the arguments I really brought over the last years when anyone suggested me to buy an own printer. But oh man, I was so wrong with that. So in this video I will tell you why I finally decided to buy an own printer and why it had been much better to do this already earlier. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. I think there is no other area in landscape photography where I was that wrong as I was with printing. And this for, for even multiple years now. And I think I started maybe like most did actually when I, when I was happy with the photograph I just ordered a print over a lab. But I didn't print all too much in the beginning, just sporadically for my own use. And to be honest, I was never interested in, in bringing my photography into a business. I was never interested in, in earning money with it. It finally, yeah, it, it, it really just happened. So with the time, I got simply asked from, from people over, over social media and also from, from friends if they could have one of my photographs as a print. And as it started to get more and more, I thought about buying a printer. And here I made a really big mistake in my thinking. You know, I have an IT and marketing company for more than 20 years now and so I thought like a businessman. And what businessmen do is really, really crazy by the way, they calculate. So I had a look what a printer costs, also what paper and ink costs and finally I compared it just with the cost of printing over a lab. I even considered the cost of maintenance and, and failed prints what could happen when you print by yourself and I saw I would have to sell at least five prints a month that a printer would get economical. And even much more if it should get cost saving compared with a lab. And yeah, five prints a month, this sounds after a lot and it is, especially when you start with selling prints. And this is why I asked myself, why should anyone be so stupid to buy a printer who doesn't sell more than five prints a month? So this was Christian, the businessman you know. So my, my strategy was I, I wanted to stick with the lab as long as it takes to, to sell five prints a month and after that I wanted to buy an own printer. I didn't make any, any pressure to myself or so because again it was not my main interest to earn money with my photography. Landscape photography was always and it is still just my big passion and let's be honest waiting for selling five prints a month before you buy your own printer. Sounds after the best possible strategy, doesn't it? I will tell you in a minute how wrong I was with these thoughts. Well, after a while I came over this threshold of five prints a month, but I anyway didn't decide for an own printer and I had two reasons therefore. On the one hand, I didn't really have the time to engage with printing. I mean, of course, I knew already how to prepare a photograph for printing, otherwise it, it also hadn't worked with printing over a lab for my clients, but I had no experience with printing by myself and I wanted to invest my time rather into photography itself and not into printing. Printing itself didn't seem to me to be anything really enjoyable for me, but landscape photography always did. And I made already a video about landscape photography as a side job where I tell a little bit more about why I anyway take money for different things in landscape photography, how I earn money and so on. I will link you the video up there for you. So the printing process was never something I was totally passionate about and on the other hand there was no printer out there on the market I was really convinced of, accepted by really really big expensive printers which had shifted the, the threshold of five prints a month much much higher. I had just a look for the smaller printers for printing up to A2 and honestly each of them had any issue what made it to a totally no-go for me. The one had troubles with loading paper straight what had ruined lots of prints, you know paper and ink is really that expensive 
and another one seemed to work fine but I wasn't really happy with the color space and as I'm really really picky here I often shift colors very slightly to enhance the mood I want to convey with my image. This was really a must requirement for me to have a proper color space in my prints. And another printer, what I was quite most interested in, everything looked perfect as, as it was, but it consumed too much ink. So other photographers uh, told me there that they had ink of hundreds of euros in the maintenance box of the printer all few months. Crazy, isn't it? So honestly, this was something what made printing by myself totally uninteresting for me and although I reached already this threshold of, of five prints a month I anyway stick with my lab what worked really fantastic for me over years now. But then there happened something and, and now it gets really interesting. As you know, and it's already more than two months ago, I had a little accident, I fell on my knee and I damaged some of my ligaments and tendons in my knee. It will heal, but I, I was quite not able to, to do longer hikes for a while, what is still not possible, but it got already much better. However, bad thing in the one hand, but I thought it were well, maybe a good idea to use this additional time I got without hiking to analyze my five star and even my, my four star image to try to make them even better, to optimize them in Lightroom and, and so. And you know, I often do things like that to, to bring my photography to the next level, what's really a good idea by the way. But honestly, after looking at around 15 images, I didn't find anything I would like to change. I also felt a tiny bit uninspired as I was chained to my office through my insurance, obviously, so I thought it could maybe help to go out to my garden to be more relaxed and look there again at my photographs. And as it was sunny and the screen of my Chromebook was reflecting, I took one of my prints with me. It was a print of one of the images I had a look already with Lightroom before, what I was totally happy about. <laughs> and, and yeah, you know, it gets really interesting. I realized that I was not 100% happy with the print, but why? It was the same image as minutes before I looked at with Lightroom, so let me explain. You know, I always soft proof my image. This means before I print, I download an ICC profile from the manufacturer of the paper to simulate on my monitor how the image will look when it is printed on especially that paper I want to use. This is a function that is supported by Lightroom, what is really, really handy by the way. And my rough printing process over the lab was always I processed the image that I was happy with, then I created a virtual copy and this copy I soft proof for the particular paper. I exported the soft proof image, sent it to the lab and they printed it. How simple is that? But the thing is, soft proofing is fantastic but it doesn't nail it 200%. It anyways looks slightly different after printing because a screen, also when it's calibrated what's necessary by the way, a screen will always stay a screen. Paper is paper. So also after soft proofing there are little differences. And so I started to think about how could I solve this issue, how, how I could optimize my, my printing process or my soft proofing process to get out the best possible print. And to make a long story short, the only way is to print, check, make slightly changes, print again, check again and so on and so on, that the print finally gets perfect. But this is something that is simply not possible if we work with the lab. I mean, I also often ordered a four prints in front just to get an idea if I have to change something slightly, but to be honest, I never did this multiple times on one image till it got perfect. So the accurate fine tuning, which we are all used to when we edit for the screen was totally missing in the printing process. But this makes a big difference. And I didn't see this for more years now, what's really a shame. So I was not really convinced by, by any printers out there on the market, but fortunately, meanwhile, there appeared a new printer on the market. It is the Epson Sure Printer P900 and this is the printer I bought some weeks ago. I'm not sponsored by Epson and I bought it by myself and the reason why I bought it is simply it gives me the possibility to fine tune my prints. I will not do an entire review of this printer, just quick, what did I look at, why, why this printer and not another. So 
the resolution was no criterion for me. I think it goes up to 1440 dots per inch, something like this, but yeah, on fine art paper you usually print with 240 to 300 dpi. So also, yeah, if it would just get up to 1000 dpi or even 600 or something like this, it were totally enough. But the color space is quite good, what is much more important for me, I have to say, it was not the best at the color space. Canon Pro 1000 is a bit better, a bit richer at green and blue, but these two colors don't need to be the richest for my landscape photography, to be honest. These are even the colors I usually put down most on saturation, so from that point of view, this was not an issue for me, and it was anyway just a slightly different. It seems that all the issues which were known from, from previous models of Epson have got solved with this one. The previous one had some paper loading issues and it was also necessary to use an own black ink for color and for your monochrome print. So you had to exchange them when it changed between printing color and black and white, what consumed quite a lot of ink for the cleaning process after each change. But this got also solved with the P900 now. What I also found really great at that printer is the design. So let me explain. I never, really never decided for any device because of its design. A printer has to work for me. I'm not bothered about how beautiful it is. I mean, yeah, the prints which come out should be beautiful, obviously, but yeah, this is more about the photographer, not about the printer. But in this case, the design is really handy. So if you don't use the printer, it is totally tidied up. It seems that there is quite no chance that there gets any dust in or so what should lead into less damaged prints due to dust on the print head. And it also doesn't need lots of space for that. So I will show you, look here. So let me, let me show you from, from this perspective. You see, I use it for drying my recent prints. If there were no printer here, I would have yeah, exactly the same space for it. And yeah, that's really cool. And when I want to use it, I just put the prints away, open the printer. I will show you another B-roll here. It's difficult with just one hand here. And yeah, and, and I just print. And as Epson is generally known for low consumption of ink, this was the first print of that size that got really interesting for me. And these are finally the reasons why I decided for this one. Is it the right printer for you? Honestly, I don't know. I would always think about your personal needs and pick out that one which covers each of your requirements. But generally, after a usage of some weeks now, I have to say, it really seems to be the perfect printer for a landscape photographer like me. I will put the link of the printer down in my description for you, just for the case that you are interested in more details about. Yeah, buying the right printer is just 50%. You also need the right paper. And I have to say that I used Hannemüller for years now, Hannemüller paper, and I, I'm really happy with the quality. And so my first intention was to stick to Hannemüller, but then I saw that Photospeed, I'm not sponsored, but Photospeed offers an amazing service, custom profiles. So what does this mean? As we already mentioned, before you want to print, you download the ICC profile for the paper and printer combination so that all the colors are correct. And this works, but <laughs> there are slightly differences between each printer. So this means if you would buy the same printer like me, it could be or it will be that the colors will look slightly different on your print than on mine because the ICC profile of the paper manufacturer don't calibrate the particular printer, obviously. But the custom profile also considers your personal printer in combination with the particular paper. And finally, you get out the totally red colors, what's really quite important. So a really, really great service from Photospeed, but this is not enough. This amazing service, custom profiles, it is totally free of charge. Amazing, isn't it? So how does this work? You just have to print a test page, which you have to download before from their website. You send them the test print and they will send you back an email with the ICC profile customized to your particular printer. And also with the simple manual, how to install it for Lightroom or Photoshop and so on. How cool is that? And just to give you a, a, an idea, so this is the print, what I printed before with the generic profile, so I, I hope this is to see here in the video. It is slightly a little bit too warm and this is the print I 
yeah, I printed with the customized profile then. Let me, let me put them side by side. Hopefully it is anything to see there. It, it is not a big difference, but it is. So it's really, I see it really well when I have a look at the prints itself. So all in all, I'm really, really happy with this printer and the new paper. And yeah, as I change the paper as well, I have to soft proof all my photographs again. This is quite a lot of work and this is what I'm, I'm currently doing already for, for the last week. I'm soft proofing and printing, soft proofing and printing, but yeah, makes fun. However, an interesting question, was it worth waiting for this printer? And to be honest, I don't think it was, really. If I had the chance to go back through time, I would buy a printer even from the first print, independent, if I would sell prints or if I would even print just for myself. Because I, th I think it's obvious. A printer offers me the possibility to fine tune my prints, what makes such a big difference. Yeah, it's really amazing. And don't get me wrong here, labs do a great job, but what's definitely missing here is fine tuning at the printing process. But I mean, if you have never printed before and you think about printing some of your photographs, I think I would not really suggest you to buy a printer up from your first print. Maybe we need this process going over a lab to get a feeling for prints also to understand if you like to have your photographs as a print. But yeah, I mean, it is really a totally different experience to look at a fine art print compared with just a digital image on your screen. Generally, I can really recommend to think about printing some of your best photographs. If you shouldn't know which lab you should choose, my recommendation is don't use the cheapest, go for quality. I mean, we invest thousands into our cameras, lenses, tripod filters, photography trips maybe, whatever. Does it really make a sense to save five euros or so just with, with a cheaper lab? The lab I used over the last years is Sal Digital. I will put you a link down in the description. They are a bit more expensive than the most, but the quality is also really fantastic. And also here, I'm not sponsored by them. So yeah, I'm super excited with my new printer. And by the way, in the end of this video, I will show you a couple of my prints, what I made already with my new printer over the last week. So stay tuned for that. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, I'm really happy about the thumb up. And you know, I never make any secrets here on my channel. I share everything with you. And so I want to encourage also you not to make any secrets. So don't forget about your friends. Share this video on Instagram and Facebook. Let's share everything with your friends as well. I thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Bye.